information here. Hi, I'm Robin Nelson, and yes, it is okay to record my voice. Okay, all right, so just some background info. How many years have you been, uh, been teaching for? Uh, this is my 10th year. Okay. And what are the degrees that you have? Um, I have a I have a bachelor's in K eight education. I have a master's in curriculum and reading specialists. I have my endorsement in um, early childhood, and then an SEI endorsement. Okay, and how many? Like, what's a different? Uh, grades that you've taught? I have only taught first and second grade. Awesome. How do you define teaching? Um, I feel like you're teaching the whole child. So when you're teaching, you're not only teaching the subjects, you're teaching, especially in early childhood, how, how to be, how to be with other children, how to be with adults, how to be respectful. So I feel like you're teaching the whole child, um, not just reading, writing, and math, but social skills and making sure that the child feels safe enough to come and talk to you and just the whole child. <laughs> okay. And what about learning? How do you define learning? Um, I define learning as it's basically whenever I see a child become curious when they weren't curious before when they want to learn, I feel like that's when learning is really taking place. Um, it's not necessarily that great lesson that you taught that now they know the or sound. It's when they're playing with it and they're playing with words and that kind of stuff. When they start to get curious and start to want to know more, that's when I think real learning is taking place. Perfect. Which learning theory or theories do you support and implement in your classroom? That's a hard one because there isn't one theory that I totally abide by. Um, I'm not a behaviorist at all. But um, the cognitive theory and the um, and those theories I'm more into as far as, I'm more into brain-based learning, which means that the whole body is learning, that you, you get everything involved. Um, activity, reading, writing, but they're also moving and they're also... Um, exploring all that kind of stuff so brain based learning the cognitive is where I more lean towards I okay. don't do a ton of rewards but I do do them <laughs> but not I mean they don't get a reward for everything so I'm more into building that curiosity building that brain um, based and I always tell them oh your brain is getting bigger <laughs> <laughs> and they love that yeah. comment <laughs> Okay. And then also, uh, do other teachers use different theories here at your school? And oh, yeah. if yes, why do you think so? Um, I know that other teachers, teachers use different theories. Um, we're just all different, and I think kids need different things. Um, I know that, I mean, like, I know a fourth grade teacher does a lot of the same brain-based learning that I do, but I also know that there's other teachers that are very rewards-based, more behaviorist um, theories that kids get. Um, prizes for everything. I also know that there's other ones that are more, they're into the more exploratory learning where everything is exploring, um, where there's very little teacher-led um, learning going on, which I agree with up to a certain point, but I think the teacher does need to be a facilitator at first. Okay, <laughs> so pretty much just the fact that your kids are different and you have to go with what you see that they Every year need. it's a different, it's a different set of kids so you you change you change with that with that set of kids but you also each teacher is different and when we are placing kids we keep in mind what that style what that teacher style is and try to place those kids with a t with the teacher that they would work best with okay. so we really try to match those personalities Okay, and then going back, you mentioned that you do have rewards, but not for everything. Can you tell me a little bit more about your uh, reward system? My reward that you system have is here? more yes. of um, 
every once a week they'll get a re the table will get a reward. It's more about working as a community and working as a team than it is about individual rewards. I rarely, 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 hardly ever, once a, every couple, um, once a year maybe, give an individual award, reward. But I do reward group work. I do reward um, that group working harmoniously together. And so um, at the end of the week, the group who has the most points will get something out of my treasure bag. Um, it's usually a bouncy jack ball or something. It, it, it's maybe a pack of Smarties. It's nothing great, mm -hmm. but they think it's the greatest thing in the world. So. And do you have particular things that you look for to be able to give uh, your tables points? Um, I look for them being able to get ready together, to get quiet together, but also to work together. So when I'm seeing a table that's arguing about what who's going to go first and that kind of stuff, I you know I always remind them, oh, you know, but if we work together, we might get those points. And you always have that table that um, learns quickly that harmoniously working is the best way to be, and they'll compromise, mm -hmm. and it teaches them to compromise. It teaches them to listen to each other. Um, the table that's on task, the table that's talking about what they're supposed to be talking about, the table that's working on what they're supposed to be working on, um, the table that's actually having constructive um, disagreements or arguments over how something is going to be is actually going to get those points as opposed to the kid who's not, the, the table who's just sitting there fighting with each other. <laughs> they're not getting they're not any getting points. <laughs> And why do you think that the reward system that you have in your class works? Um, I think it works because I think it teaches them the value of working together, which is something that they're going to have to learn for the rest of their lives. So to have that little reward at the end of the week or to have something that they're working for, it's not always easy working with a group, especially if there's personalities and I think we all need that little attaboy when you're working with a group when then not everybody's getting along, but you have to get along at that time. So, and I think we need that as an adult, as adults too. Mm -hmm. So that's why. I think that's awesome works. that they're building that from such a young age. Yeah. And my last question, what is a strategy that you have used in your classroom that you could see just totally didn't work for anything <laughs> in regards gosh, to where just... where do I Because <laughs> there's always stuff that doesn't work. You're thinking, oh, this is going to be great. Yeah, no, th think really of not. one that totally didn't work and then see if you could answer what you did instead of um, having that particular strategy. Well, okay, so I will... I will do a beh the behavior chart. The okay. um, when I first started teaching in first grade, I had the whole red, um, red, green, and yellow light system, and um, it didn't work for me. And it works for a lot of teachers, um, but it didn't work for me. One, everybody was curious about who got what, even though they had numbers on them instead of names. Everybody knew each other's numbers, and everybody knew when somebody was in trouble, and it caused issues inside the classroom. More issues with that behavior kit, the one that had the yellow or the red. It, it wasn't, it didn't work for me because I I just felt it caused more disruption instead of working on the behavior itself. Mm -hmm. So I made my behavior private. It's very private. They have their own behavior chart in their book and nobody knows what their behavior is. Um, half the time we're the only way that somebody would know is if they overheard me and the other child talking and even then that's rare so that's what I started doing is making that behavior chart private doesn't mean that they don't get a consequence or anything else like that but it, we try to make it very nonchalant and very private just to make it to where there is no embarrassment and I don't get more behavior more bad behavior for the kid because everybody already knows about it so he might as well just let it all go mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, that didn't work for me it works for a lot of teachers a lot of teachers use it and it works well it just did not work for me okay and is it okay um, if I put your contact information yeah. on my summary report just my yes. teacher will see that yes 
All righty. Well, thank you so much for your time. No Thanks. problem. Well, I record oh everything.